So without further ado, I need to jump into this because there's just so much here in every part of the product. Save as previous release. If you've ever talked to me on this topic, you probably have heard me say words like, I doubt we'll ever see that happen. I have been proven wrong. <laughs> so here we have a part file. I need to send this to someone who's running SolidWorks 2022. How does it work? Well, pretty much as you would expect, I go to save as. From my pull down here, I now have these choices, 2022, 2023. And here's the rule. You're gonna be able to save as previous release two versions prior. And that's why here in 2024, we see 2022 and 2023. Let's talk about the whole wizard. So we're gonna open up that same part that we just had. Um, one of the challenges with the whole, wiz with the whole wizard it always required points in the sketch. And adding relationships and dimensions to points is a little tricky when, wouldn't it be easier if I needed, let's say, four holes on the corners of a rectangle just to put a sketch rectangle in there because that's super efficient. Well, with 2024, you now can do that. When we go to the whole wizard under position, we can use an existing 2D sketch to locate our whole centers. And then of course, in this case, I don't need all of these holes. So I'm going to exclude these references, leaving me with the three holes that I want. Brand new stamp tools. So in this part, I wanna add a stiffening rib into the sheet metal part. One of the challenges is maybe I don't have a form tool for it yet. We could always do this with form tools. Now we have a brand new tool that's going to enable us just to simply create a sketch, launch the stamp tool, give it our parameters, depth and width and radii, and you've created a stamp. Of course, it's a feature that can be patterned or you know used in any way you want. I didn't have to go and grab a form tool to do that. Let's start with the rules based D feature. So in this case, what I want to do is I want to de-feature this because I'm going to share this with others, but I want to protect my IP. So I really have three different levels of IP that I'm chasing after. One of them is uh, no protection. We'll just go ahead and copy the part into the new part or the configuration. Level two, I just want to re remove all the internal geometry. And level three would be just basically build a box out of this thing. So that's sort of IP based. What we've already done here is we've applied um, IP level uh, custom properties onto these components, one, two, and three. And I've set up rules to define how level one gets de-featured, how level two and level three get de-featured. So let's see this in action. I'm gonna basically just go to my de-feature tool, walk through here, we'll choose our rules. I'm gonna use the IP classification rule selection. We'll take a look at it here and this is where the rules look like. So level one, two, and three and different levels of de-feature for each level. And we just run it. So with very little interaction beyond that, I get exactly the level of de-feature I want for each component in this assembly. Now, when you do a de-feature, you can save this as a separate part file and share that, or it can become a configuration within this assembly. Repairing component of patterns that are missing a reference is now easy. We don't really just, we, we typically we go back and sort of totally redefine the component pattern. So I'm gonna open up this uh, wheel assembly and of course, I already know it has an issue. So SolidWorks is going to report that we've got a problem here. When we investigate the problem a little further in the feature manager and we edit this, uh, this circular pattern, we can clearly see, oh, look, it's, it's now missing a reference that used to be there. I could choose the reference if I know what it is, but now we have an automatic tool. This button right here is an auto repair. It will find an adjacent reference. If it's in the same place, it says, oh, look, I found one for you and you can accept that. Compare results. So now, if I wanted to compare, you know, let's say four results, I have that choice in 2024, splits my windows up into four, and in each of these windows, I can choose what result that I want to look at. So in this upper right window, I'm going to change pressure into fill, I've got flow time, and sync marks. And then we'll synchronize these views so as we zoom, pan, rotate, it's simultaneous. We take a real close look at the different result plots at a single time. The align components command has been updated to incorporate the options for aligning and evenly spacing components. Options in the align components command include align left, 
right, top, bottom, as well as the option for components to be evenly spaced across or down have been combined into a single command option. So um, some of this stuff is new for 2024 are the newest release of the 3D experience tools. Some of it's been around for a long time, but we launched in October 1st, I believe it was the Sharon markup capabilities. And so I want to show you what that looks like as a SolidWorks user and then how the recipient is experiencing that data as well. So here's, here's what it would look like as a SolidWorks user. This is the new button you're going to see. It's called share, share file. And you just, you have something on the screen, you click the button and you'll activate um, comments if you want. And then you can say, restrict it to whoever I email the file to or the, the link to. And you just say share and off it goes. They get a message on their screen that would look like this. And then when they click on it, they're taken into their platform tools in a web browser and they can do markup, measure, you know, and do things like this, add some comments and text and, you know, kind of participate in the design process, if you will, just right here in a web browser. Okay. They can add comments because I enabled that function when I sent the link so they can comment back to you. Now we cruise back over to your computer and that comment is going to pop up right in your SolidWorks window right here on the right hand side of the screen. So I can see the comment and also the 3D viewing, uh, 3D play tool is here as well. So I can look at the markups and comments that were provided and have the SolidWorks model open on my screen at the same time. Okay. So very, very collaborative. And then of course, I would make the, the change to the CAD model. And then I can save the file back up to the 3D storage, 3D experience. And it's, it's aware of drawing, so I can attach the drawing at the same time, share both files, put a revision and a comment on there and save that up. And then uh, those files will be available in the browser as well. And then here's the template I was talking about. We can export all this data into a nicely formatted template. And this is the document you can take to your design review meeting. It's got all the screenshots and all the metadata in there. Just as an example, we used PowerPoint in this case. Now this is called a super feature. Uh, we can change um, from an extrude to a cut to a solid. And then right on the fly, we can change it over to a sweep. I didn't want to do extrude. I wanted to do a sweep just change it on the fly and then the other thing that's really nice here sweeps require profile sketches for sweep path i can just drop in a sketch on the fly while i'm in the feature create some geometry and then just have that be a sweep instead of an extrude so these are called super features meaning you can just change things on the fly without canceling and undoing and deleting a bunch of stuff